Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back and uh, we will keep continue our discussion about the B cell activation and differentiation inside the lymph node and in the germinal centers of the lymph node. So what are the events in the germinal center of the lymph node happening? So as we discussed in our last class, if you look into the <coughs> picture uh, from our last class, uh, we have discussed about the activation of the B cell, primarily the thymus dependent activation. We have uh, discussed much more in details. Uh, so, when there is a thymus dependent activation and this uh, process is primarily meant for, uh, for example, the protein antigens, the proteins, the, uh, the protein antigens that are processed antigens. Uh, so, these protein antigens, they uh, actually elicit Mm, this kind of a response. That is a uh, thymus dependent response. And the thymus dependent activation uh, as we have seen that it leads to proliferation of the B cell. Now, the B cell we call it the activated B cell. So, here mm, after this, this, this B cell here, this B cell here uh, is an now it is an activated B cell because it has got signals from the T follicular helper cell, the follicular helper uh, T cell, it has received the signals for, for its activation and it is now kind of ready to uh, develop into a specific B cell producing a specific antibody type against the antigen that it has captured. So, it has captured the antigen presented it by the MHC class 2 to a T helper cell and the T helper cell helps it to activate and now it this this B cell uh, starts to proliferate. Now it starts to in, in increase in population. So now it proliferates where in the germinal center. Now this uh, what happens in the germinal center? Let us look quickly uh, in the next part. So now <coughs> this is the lymph node. This is the lymph node. Let us say. So the lymph node. I told you previously as well. So, the lymph node has some specific regions, the medulla, the paracortex and the cortex. So, there are at least three uh, specific regions in the lymph node, the medulla, the paracortex and the cortex and within the cortex you have this kind of uh, follicular structures, uh, these, are the, these are the germinal centers. Now, this germinal centers contains this uh, B cells, this proliferating B cells. So, once the B cell is activated, so what we, uh, what we got from our last lecture, this activated, activated B cells, they will now enter into this germinal center. They will now enter into the germinal center and they start to proliferate here in the germinal center. So, they now increase in number, undergoes mitosis and they will start to proliferate, increase in numbers. And at this stage, I told you they will start expressing certain chemokine receptors and these are the CXCR4 receptors. And these receptors can recognize a specific chemokine which is the CXCL12 which is secreted from the stromal cells and this helps this interaction of this chemokine to the chemokine receptor helps to retain the, uh, the retains this, this interaction here is primarily required for retention of these uh, centroblasts, retains the centroblasts 
in the dark zone. So, this is the dark zone. This part of the germinal center, we call it the dark zone. And this part, where the final differentiation occurs, we call it the light zone. Now, what happens in this dark zone, these cells which has started proliferating, these are called the centroblasts. Now, these centroblasts, they will undergo a specific process known as the somatic hypermutations. So, they will undergo somatic hypermutations and they will produce different centroblasts with different affinities. Affinities for what? So, the, uh, the B cell, they will develop different B cell receptors or the antibodies on the surface which has different affinities for the antigen. So, these centroblasts have this kind of they express these antibodies on the surface which will now have different affinities for the antigen. So, they have been activated by an antigen that we have seen in our previous uh, lecture in the previous uh, case. So, now they are activated these, these, these B cells are activated and these centroblasts what we call the centroblasts now will undergo what is called somatic hypermutation. It is called somatic hypermutation. Hyper that is the somatic hypermutation and in during this process of somatic hypermutation they start to develop mutations. So, there are mutations in the variable region in this somatic hypermutation process. So, the somatic hypermutation process they will start to develop uh, mutations in the variable region mutations occurs in the variable region. So, there are point mutations in the variable region and uh, these point mutations are primarily carried out by, uh, by an enzyme called the AID. So, AID is basically activation induced cytidine deaminase. It is the activation, activation induced cytidine deaminase. So, this uh, activation induced cytidine uh, deaminase that's lead, that leads to deamination and then there is a uh, kind of uh, DNA repair uh, processes like base excision uh, repair or uh, mismatch repair. There are different processes of uh, DNA repair processes that are being activated after this AID. So, we have the AID. Now, this, these centroblasts here, they will start expression of this AID they will express this AID enzyme. So, this activation induced cytidine deaminase is being expressed in the centroblasts. Now, these centroblasts they will start expressing AID and will acquire mutations in the variable region of the heavy and the light chains. So, now they will have mutations in the variable regions and they will have this each of these centroblasts will now express B cell receptors on the surface which have different affinities for different uh, for the same antigen. So, they have different affinities for the same antigen. So, some of them will now carry high mutation high uh, affinity or low affinity. So, mm, this hypermutation is primarily to increase the affinity of the antibodies towards the mm, uh, antigen. 
So now these centroblasts which are now prepared to enter the light zone. So these centroblasts are now kind of prepared to enter the light zone. They will now start to express on their surface and the class of chemokine receptors which is the CXCR5. Now what is the role of the CXCR5? Let us see. So now what happens? Now these, these, these uh, centroblasts in the dark zone, they have proliferated, undergone somatic hypermutation, point mutations being introduced in their, um, uh, in the variable regions of their heavy and light chains. So now they have uh, differentiated into, now they are different, they are not same. So each of the centroblasts, so maybe some centroblasts, for example, this one, let us say here, this has very high affinity for the antigen. The uh, receptor has a very high affinity for the antigen. And let us say this one does not have a, a high affinity, so its affinity has reduced towards the antigen. So th they have either uh, a good mutation or a bad mutation. So if it is a bad mutation, that means a low affinity mutation it is the receptor's affinity towards the antigen is reduced. If it has a good mutation, then its affinity towards the antigen has increased or improved affinity. So there can be two situations. It has bad or low affinity or it has good or improved affinity. Now these cells for getting selected for the affinity, now these cells has to be selected because uh, they have to be selected for their affinity. So which one has higher affinity? which one has more affinity. So that has to be selected, only those cells will be selected and those cells which out of this somatic hyper, uh, hypermutation which has developed lower affinity whose affinities has reduced will now be rejected. Now these cells has to come into the uh, light zone. So what is there in the light zone? In the light zone we find specialized cells like the follicular dendritic cells. They have this kind of the structure and these dendritic cells, they are the primary producers of a class of cytokines that is the chemokines, basically chemokines that is the CX, CXCL13. Now this CXCL13 is a ligand for this CXCR5 receptor. So this CXCL5 binds to the CX, uh, CXCR5 binds to the CXCL13 and they are attracted towards the, they are kind of attracted towards the light zone. So now they start moving into the light zone. In this, these centroblasts, they start moving to the light zone now. Now once they come to the light zone, they are the centrocytes, we call them the centrocytes. And these centrocytes, they, as I told, they can have a high affinity mutation or they can have a low affinity mutation and as per that mutation, they will have different fates. So now they can have two different fates. Let us say this one has a high affinity mutation and this one has a low affinity mutation. So what will happen? Now this one which has a lower affinity mutation that means now it has less affinity towards the antigen will undergo apoptosis. And there are specialized macrophages in this region of the light zone in this uh, in the germinal center there are a specialized group of macrophages who will engulf them. These apo ap apoptotic cells will be engulfed by a specialized class of uh, macrophages and they will die. So they will not exist, they will be excluded from the system, these low affinity mutation uh, cells, the cells which has mm, low affinity mutations on their B cell receptors. Those with the high affinity receptors will now be helped by this follicular dendritic cells. Now what does this follicular dendritic cells do? So this follicular dendritic cells, they kind of adheres 
these antigens on their surface. So, they now display these antigens on their surface. These antigens are present on this on these follicles on the surface of this uh, dendritic cells. This is the this is the antigen. So now these B cells, these B cells or these centrocytes, these are the centrocytes. These centrocytes, which has a high affinity. Now, since it has a high affinity, it will try to capture one of these antigens by the B cell receptor. So, a B cell will now interact by this B cell receptor with this antigen which is being adhered to the surface of the follicular dendritic cell. So, this is the follicular dendritic cell we also call them the FDC or the follicular dendritic cell. This follicular dendritic cell is present inside the germinal center inside the uh, light zone of the germinal center and they carry this antigen. So, they carry the antigens on the surface and these, uh, cell, these B cells, the activated B cells which has already a very high affinity mutation. That means, they have high, they now have developed higher affinity for the antigens. They will interact with the antigens that are uh, captured by the captured on the surface of the uh, follicular dendritic cells. So, now they will uh, immediately get hold of this anti antigen by this B cell receptors and again there is another interaction. What is that interaction? So, now they will interact with the they will now interact with the T helper cells. And which class of T helper cells? They will interact with the T follicular helper cells again. So, there are follicular helper cells that are present. So, this is a B cell. Now, again this B cells which has uh, interacted with which has the high affinity and has interacted with an antigen with a very high affinity, they will now again internalize. So, they will now again internalize the antigen, process it and again present it on the surface by MHC class 2. So, then again there is a MHC class 2 interaction. So, they will now present the antigen on the surface by MHC class 2 and again there are follicular uh, helper T helper T F H cells that are present here the T follicular helper cells the T F H or the T follicular helper cells which are present in the light zone of the germinal center they will interact by the T cell receptors. So, with the T C R so there will be an interaction and again there will be interaction of the C D 40 ligand to the C D 40. So, again a C D 40 to C D 40 L interaction the C D 40 ligand which is expressed on the uh, T F H cell will again interact with the C D 40 and this interaction here is very essential. So, this interaction here is very essential for the next step that is the class switching. So, let us uh, let us look at in the, at uh, this part again uh, quickly. So, there is somatic hypermutation leading to increase or decrease in the affinity of the B cell receptors expressed on the surface towards the antigen. Remember then these B cells, the centroblasts, they will start expressing CXCR5. CXCR5 is has high affinity towards CXCL7. This is a chemokine. A chemokine called the CXCL7 is produced from the follicular uh, dendritic cells, the FDCs and that will pull kind of that will bring the due to the attraction uh, they will this these central blasts will now move to the light zone and now they are called the centrocytes. Now, these centrocytes either can have a high affinity or a low affinity. 
Now then, 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 then there it needs a selection. So then there is an affinity maturation or an affinity selection process, and this process is called affinity maturation or affinity selection. So now, depending on its affinity towards the antigen, it will be selected. So either if it has a low affinity, bad affinity or a low affinity, it will undergo apoptosis. If it has a high affinity, it will be exposed to the antigens that are presented by or uh, pre, uh, uh, that are captured by the follicular dendritic cells that are present here. Now, this follicular dendritic cells which has captured antigen on the surface will present this antigen to this centrocyte or the B cell or the high affinity uh, receptor producing B cell and this high affinity receptors can now bind with very high affinity to this antigen. And this binding ensures that the B cell is now this cent centrocyte is now selected for a high affinity. So, this, this process is known as affinity maturation or affinity selection. So, now the high affinity uh, B cells or the B cells having very high affinity towards the antigen will be selected out of the whole population. It is a very small population, it is not a very big population. So, many of the cells they die by apoptosis and once they die these apoptotic cells are also uh, phagocytosed by a class of macrophages that are present here. So, they will be killed basically, they will be rejected, those that population of the B cell is rejected every, so in, in this whole process of this uh, immune system, there are very, very careful checkpoints everywhere. So, it is not like uh, uh, the, it's, the processes are very random. So, there are very, very uh, well designed checkpoints where it is being kind of checked or it is there are, there are um, quality control checks. So, there is a mutation, there will be a quality control check, so, uh, the, the B cell receptor with the high affinity will pass through, with the low affinity will not pass through, they will be dying, they will be rejected and they, that population will not continue to exist. So, the high affinity population will be selected and by a process called the affinity maturation with the help of the follicular dendritic cells and of course, the T follicular helper cells, the TFH cells which are also present in this region. Now, the TFH cells as we remember from our last lecture, the TFH cells one of the major components that is being secreted by these TFH cells are interleukin 21, remember the IL 21. So, now this TFH cells will start to produce IL 21 as well, interleukin IL 21, a specialized interleukin or a, a specialized cytokine that is being produced from uh, this TFH uh, cells, the follicular helper cells. So, this IL-21 will be produced and that IL-21 is primarily uh, required for the survival and the proliferation of the uh, B cells, the matured B cells, the activated B cells as well as they will start to produce a whole subset of cytokines. There will be production of a whole set of cytokines and that will actually govern the process called the class switching. So, now these antibodies will start to class switch. So, they will preferably induce class switch to different different isotypes. So, now this antibodies, so far we were still having this IgMs on the surface, the, 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 the main B cell receptors are comprised of these IgM molecules. Now, they will start to switch. So, there will be isotype switching, there will be class switching and then they will start to produce different types of antibodies. Now, they will start producing different types of antibodies like IgG, IgE, so, for example, and this is being governed by the types of different cytokines that are being produced from them. So, for example, they will produce interleukin 4, you will, you will get a more uh, detailed idea about this. So, different cytokines, they will prefer, preferentially they will induce uh, the switching to different types of iso isotypes. For example, you will have IL-4, interleukin 4 when we will study about the cytokines more in details, we will see 
the role of the different cytokines, the different uh, interleukins. So, for the time being, we are, let us know that this interleukin 4 is mainly responsible for switching to IgE that is immunoglobulin E which is responsible for uh, mainly the hypersensitivity reactions, allergic reactions. You will have IgE, you can have interferon INF gamma which mainly switches it to IgG. You can also have IL-21 which is also responsible for IgG. So, there are many other uh, uh, cytokines to name. I am only naming a very few of them. I am not naming all of them. So, this is a very, very small class of uh, names that I have mentioned here. We will get to know this when, when we will learn the cytokines more in details. For the time being, I am not discussing them in uh, very details. So, but at least you know that once there is uh, this kind of an interaction. So, once they, it is uh, affinity selection process is done, affinity maturation process is done that is the uh, B cell or the centrocyte is selected for the high affinity mutation. Those high affinity cells will now interact with the T follicular helper cells and uh, this uh, CD40, CD40 ligand interaction will again occur MHC class 2 will present the antigen on the surface and will interact with the TCR with the T, T follicular helper cell leading to secretion of different cytokines. These cytokines will basically help in the class switching to different isotypes. Now, this uh, that will done, now they will class switch and depending on the type of cytokine that is being secreted or the type of cytokine that is available they will switch into different uh, antibody types. So, different isotypes. So, now there this, this process we call it as class switching. So, this is the class switching. We are not going into the detailed mechanism of the class switching at this moment, but these cytokines as you know they lead to uh, certain uh, activation of certain transcription factors and that can actually lead to the uh, final effect. So, the cytokines mediate their action by mostly by uh, the um, induction of or activation of certain transcription factors downstream. We will read about this more in details when we uh, study the cytokines in details. Now, after the class switching phenomenon, now the last step is um, finally these these cells will finally become either they will become a plasma cell. So, either they will develop into a plasma cell or into a memory B cell. So, it can become a memory B cell. or into a plasma cell. So, that will produce the antibodies, the soluble antibodies. So, now these antibodies will now be the mediators actually. So, this is the plasma cell and this is the plasma cells and finally, these plasma cells will again they will migrate to the bone marrow. So, these plasma cells will now finally again migrate to the bone marrow and from there they will start secreting the antibodies. So, if you look into this whole picture at, le at least in this part, so we have at least uh, a few distinct uh, steps that are occurring in the whole process of activation and the differentiation. So, after the uh, B cells are being activated, these B cells they will enter into the germinal center, into the dark zone 
in the dark zone these centroblasts they are their centroblasts and these centroblasts they will start proliferating so this is a process of proliferation and in this proliferation process they will start to have they will start expressing a particular um, uh, enzyme known as the activation induced cytidine deaminase which leads to point mutations that uh, actually introduces point mutations in the variable regions and leading to a process called somatic hypermutation this somatic hypermutation now this somatic hypermutation introduces point mutations in the uh, variable region leading to an increase or decrease in the affinity towards the antigen now this uh, centroblasts will then cross the dark zone they will enter into the from the dark zone they will enter into the light zone by the action of a chemokine once they come to this uh, light zone these are the centrocytes now these centrocytes will start interacting with antigens that are captured on the surface of this follicular dendritic cells follicular dendritic cells capture these antigens on uh, the surface and present it to the centrocytes centrocytes interact with the b cell receptor the high affinity ones will interact with the b cell receptor low affinity ones will be rejected and will undergo apoptosis now once they are selected for the high affinity then this uh, once they can uh, they can recognize the antigens by their high affinity receptors they will internalize again the antigen and will present it on the surface by class 2 mhc molecules class 2 mhc molecules that will interact with the t cell receptors on the t follicular helper cells which are also present in the light zone now then there is CD40, CD40L interaction occurring and the, uh, T, the TCR interaction and that leads to secretion of certain specialized um, molecules or the specialized cytokines. These cytokines includes interleukin 21 as we can as we know that uh, the typically interleukin 21 is uh, secreted from the TFH cells and that is required for the uh, survival as well as the proliferation of these th um, of these centrocytes and as well they will produce certain specialized uh, uh, cyt cytokines like interleukin 4, INF gamma, interleukin 21 which leads to the class switching phenomenon. So, switching uh, the class switching to different isotypes and now they will produce different uh, and, uh, antibodies will now be produced they will switch to different antibodies like IgE, IgG and then these, these uh, centrocytes or these B cells will now differentiate into a memory B cell or into a plasma cell and finally this plasma cell will again migrate back to the bone marrow so where we started from so it goes back to the bone marrow and it starts secreting the antibodies which mediates all these functions so we got to know about uh, uh, in this in this lecture we got to know about the b cell activation and differentiation how the b cell activation occurs how it differentiates into different uh, cell types different uh, and uh, finally class switches into different isotypes produces different types of antibodies and uh, you can go through all the details in the book uh, the, in the books that we have referred to uh, you will be finding more details on the different steps uh, I did not uh, go into the very uh, details of the different steps because that is uh, not really uh, possible in this uh, short period of time it is very difficult because there are a lot of molecular uh, phenomena that are involved in the somatic hypermutations or the class switching phenomenon so those uh, there are uh, many molecular events uh, that are uh, occurring so it, uh, it is very difficult to cover in this uh, short span of time but I try to uh, summarize the whole uh, events that are occurring within the germinal center leading to the activation and the differentiation of the B cells. So, um, that is all from the B cell uh, maturation and development and uh, activation part uh, uh, and uh, I hope you liked it. Thank you.